In this video, we're going to be introducing the ideas of Taylor and Maclaurin series, which we'll see are a special type of power series. So this is extending um, some of what we started learning about in 11.8 on power series. So the idea of Taylor series is that we want to represent some function f of x um, by a power series. Okay, so let's for now call that power series g of x equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of cn x minus a to the n, just our general form of a power series. Okay, so what should this power series look like to be a reasonable representation of this function f of x? Okay, well let's assume that f of x is um, a nice function that has derivatives of, of all orders, so we can always take the derivative um, of this function f at a um, certain point a. Okay, then what we want to help us create this representation, what would be really reasonable for getting a good approximation, is to make the value of this power series representation at a the same as the value of our function. We'd also want the derivative at a in our function, our power series here, to be the same as the, the derivative of f. And we'd want the second derivatives to be equal, okay, etc. So just to get you thinking about maybe why this is reasonable, if you think to our um, tangent line approximation, when I would have some function f here, and I'd want to find the tangent line to this function at a, okay, remember that the tangent line would be y minus y1 or y minus f of a would equal m, and the slope of that tangent line would be equal to the derivative at a times x minus a. So I'd have y was f of a plus f prime of a x minus a, okay? So this y that I have here is essentially like my g here, but it's just the first, first couple of terms, okay? So we're seeing how the power series representation and the, um, the tangent line is just sort of a beginning representation, okay? It's a beginning approximation, but I could think of if I added information about the second derivative, the third derivative, I could get an even better approximation to my function here, okay? So let's think about what these cn's are going to need to look like, okay? So what should the cn here equal to be a good uh, representation of our function? Well, notice that if, um, let's see, let's write out our power series here. So my power series representation looks like C naught plus C1 X minus A plus C2 X minus A squared plus C3 X minus A cubed plus C4 X minus A to the fourth, okay, etc. So let me write, start writing some things over here. So notice that at g of a, okay, if I just replaced or plugged in a here, all of these terms after the constant would just be zero. So I'd get g of a equals c naught, okay? Well, that means c naught has to be equal to f of a. Okay, we want the um, value at a in our power series to be the same as the value in our original function. So what about the second derivative, or excuse me, the first derivative? If I take g prime here, this is a constant, so that derivative would just be zero. When I would take the derivative of this c1 x minus a, that's just a linear term, so I'm just going to get the constant for the derivative. Then I'd have plus 2 c2 x minus a plus c, uh, let's see, 3 c3 x minus a squared plus 4 c4 x minus a cubed. Okay, it would keep going like that. So then notice what happens if I plug in a here into the uh, first derivative, everything after c1 is going to be zero. So I just get c1, so that means that's my um, f prime of a here. Okay, so we're trying to see how those constants could relate to um, the function that we're trying to represent. 
okay? So what if I did this for the second derivative? Okay, derivative of this constant is just zero. Then I'll have 2c2 plus 3 times 2. When I do the um, derivative here of this next term, this would be 3 times 2c3x minus a. Then I'd have plus 4 times 3c4x minus a squared, etc. Okay, so what's going to happen for that second derivative then? When I plug in a, everything after the 2c2 will be 0. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to need a little more room to write out some of what I'm doing over here. So I'm going to have g double prime of a is equal to 2c2, which is my second derivative here at a. Okay, so we're doing this thinking, trying to figure out what cn needs to be. So we'll just do this a couple more times to get the idea. The third derivative, derivative of this constant will be 0. I'm going to have 3 times 2c3. Whoops, is the derivative of that linear term. Then I'll have plus 4 times 3 times 2c4 times x minus a, okay, etc. here. So that third derivative, when I replace uh, x with a here, everything after this constant term of 3 times 2c3 will be 0. So this is 3 times 2c3. So that's our third derivative at a, okay? And so if we did this one more time, let's see what will we get. So what is my fourth derivative at a going to be? Well, when I would take the derivative again here, notice that my fourth derivative, okay, the derivative of this constant term would be 0, the derivative of this next term would be 4 times 3 times 2c4, okay, then I get a bunch more um, terms here, all of which like in our previous cases, would evaluate to 0 when I plugged in a. So I would just have 4 times 3 times 2c4 here is my fourth derivative at a. Okay. So what we're trying to do here is see where our Taylor series um, formula is going to be coming from. Okay, So we have this idea that to be a good representation, um, these constants here should meet um, should these, uh, these equalities that we have here where the derivatives of my original function are going to be equal to the derivatives of my power series at this center point A. Okay, so notice that looking at what we have here in the middle, I have C0, then C1, 2C2, 3 times 2C3, 4 times 3 times 2C4. Um, notice that this looks like GN of A here is equal to n factorial cn is equal to our nth derivative at a. Okay, so we're finding that cn is fn of a over n factorial. So now we can use this information to help us state our definition for the Taylor series for um, a function f centered at a. Okay. So our definition for the Taylor series says that suppose the function f has derivatives of all orders on an interval containing the point a, then we say that the Taylor series for f centered at a is the following, where I have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of fn of a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. So this is exactly a power series where the coefficients have this particular form um, of being the nth derivative evaluated at that center a over n factorial. So notice that this would be equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared plus f triple prime of a over 3 factorial times x minus a cubed, etc. Okay. Notice that I could have written this over 1 factorial, but 1 factorial is equal to 1. And this constant here could have been written over 0 factorial. Remember, 0 factorial is equal to 1. 
and this initial term here, um, which would have been x minus a to the 0 is just equal to 1, so that's why we just have a, a constant term there. Also note that when we say the zeroth derivative, notice that the first term here would have 0 plugged in um, for n, that's just equal to the original function. Okay, so that's how we get our Taylor series um, formula for our function f centered at a. Um, we also have a special case called the Maclaurin series, which is just the Taylor series where a is equal to 0. Okay, so this is just the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of fn of 0 over n factorial times x to the n. Okay, so this means we have f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus f triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed, etc. Okay, so this gives us our formulas for our Taylor and Maclaurin series. So we just want to make a few notes before we get into doing examples where we find Taylor and Maclaurin series. So here are a couple of notes. Oops, let me go up a tiny bit. Okay, so our first note says that um, if f has a power series representation at a, then that power series must be the Taylor series of f centered at a. So if it's possible to write down um, a power series representation for f, meaning a sum um, of some cn's x minus a to the n, then the cn's must have the form fn of a over n factorial. Okay, um, But it's possible to write down a Taylor series for a function and the function not to have um, the representation, a power series representation. So it's possible to write down um, a Taylor series for a function, but the function not to equal its own Taylor series. So that'll just happen in some kind of weird cases. So one situation where this happens is that you have f of x equal to e to the negative 1 over x squared whenever x is not 0 and 0 if x equals 0. Okay, So we can find all the derivatives of this function. Um, it turns out that without going through um, the proof with the limit definition of the derivative and things, it turns out that f prime of 0 equals 0 and in fact the nth derivative at 0 equals 0 for all n. So when you would write down the Taylor series for this function, you would just get a sum of all zeros. Okay, so the Taylor series exists, but clearly the Taylor series is not equal to the function. Okay, so the reason that we mention this is that we actually um, will need to do a little bit of work to show that a function is actually equal to its Taylor series. So for Taylor series to be useful, we need the following two things um, to be known. We need to know where that power series, remember a Taylor series is just a special kind of power series, so we need to know the values of x for which that Taylor series converges. We need to be able to find the interval of convergence for the Taylor series. And then we also need to know the values of x for which that power series, that Taylor series, um, for the function is equal to the function. Okay, So we're going to focus on finding Taylor series and finding intervals of convergence first, and then we'll look at how we can show that um, the function actually equals its Taylor series and what will need to be true for the function to equal its Taylor series. So keep watching the next video to see some examples of finding Taylor and Maclaurin series.